Graphene. Some of you may have heard of this already and some of you may have not. We're gonna put it up against regular distilled water and Corsair's XL5 Premix solution. Let's get into that right now. So before we get into the video, I'd just like to thank everybody out there who's been subscribing, liking and commenting down below. Seriously guys, I give you guys a thumbs up right back at you. If you're new to the channel, I really hope we gain a new subscriber today. Okay, so graphene. What is graphene? Graphene is basically the stuff that's on the tip of your pencil, your number two pencil. It's graphite, but it's more broken down. The two gentlemen who invented it, I guess, in 2004, basically just got a, a block of graphite or a rock of graphite, whatever it was, took some regular scotch tape, and kept peeling and going layer by layer until they actually got to graphene, which is 200 times more stronger than steel. It, it's supposed to literally revolutionize the world. I believe it was the UK that was in, investing billions of dollars in a 10 year research program into this product. Companies have been trying to find better ways of actually creating it because the process is very expensive. It's very energy consuming. So a lot of people have actually been trying to figure this stuff out because it could literally make your walls glow. They could make a house mixing this in with concrete where it would actually disperse heat and grab heat. Graphene's a little different than, well, pretty much any other substance on earth. Usually you put a substance in something really cold, it's going to contract. You put something in fire, really bad heat, it's going to expand. Graphene has the opposite effect. It actually expands as it gets colder and it actually contracts as it gets hotter. So it's actually got some pretty cool differences compared to other chemicals and materials out there in the world. Again, this stuff is 200 times stronger than steel and like 20% less dense. I don't remember the exact numbers. I'm not really gonna go too much into a whole science of this stuff. I'm not really that smart to get into it, but this stuff is literally supposed to change the world. The medical field, it's supposed to like make these cool tattoos that like stay on you for like weeks that could get your vitals. Again, it could go into concrete to where if you have wallpaper on your wall, the wallpaper will light up your house. So they say. One big thing they would like to use it for is extracting salt from salt water and having actual drinking water. Now, a reverse osmosis, other ways that they have been trying to do this is, is very energy consuming and very expensive. So graphene would do it at way less the cost, a lot easier. But again, that's a real big science I don't really understand. I did a little bit of research before this video and I've always heard about it through the years. So the two gentlemen who did discover or invent the graphene in 2004, they won Nobel Peace Prizes. But I did read somewhere that this stuff was actually first detected over 150 years ago by somebody else. Now, if you do want a more of a breakdown of graphene and what it is and what it's supposed to do, well then I'll put some links down below to some very good videos that should give you a lot better understanding of it than I will. So again, what we're gonna be doing is looking at how does it handle thermals? Well, this stuff is supposed to be way better than liquid metal, way better than anything else on earth for distributing heat. Literally 2000 times better, or is it 200 times or 20 times better? I think it's 20 times better than anything on earth, which was diamonds, I believe. So this stuff is supposed to be like really cool, right? Well, again, it takes a lot to go from the lab to real world. Really not looking for nothing crazy, but if we could find a three to four C drop in temperatures, that's tangible. That is a very good drop in temperature, especially going from something that's already a premix that's well known from other companies like Corsair or EK. Straight distilled was the original way of doing this. But of course you wanted to use uh, anti-growth inhibitors because you didn't want moss growing in your, uh, in your loop. You didn't want mixed metals causing corrosion. So you had to put like a, a mixed metal inhibitor in here. I did use straight distilled water for this. Now, for those of you who may be worried about the growth problems and mixed metal problems, it was only for a few hours and it was literally right after I drained my loop of the Corsair XL5 liquid. So I'm pretty sure there was still a little bit of that stuff in there. But again, it was only for a few hours, just enough to run Cinebench R23. 
So that's what I used today. I used Cinebench R23. I ran the test for one hour for each of these. So hour for the distilled, hour for the Corsell XL5 Premix, and for the Go Chiller Graphene Solution. But before we go into that, there are timestamps down below for those of you who may be here just for certain parts of the video. If you're here for the numbers, if you're here to see how it looks in an open loop, just go down below. I'll have it nice and nice and chaptered out for you. So before we get into the numbers, let's talk a little bit about the components we use for this test. So first off, we're rocking an ASRock X570 Steel Legend motherboard. We have an AMD Ryzen 5800X, that's an 8-core 16-thread processor. Uh, the graphics card doesn't really matter, but I just threw the RTX 2060 Super to a gig sticks of Trident ZRGB 3600 Mega Transfer CL16 cast latency. For hard drive space, we're using a single M.2 WD Black Gen 4 M.2. Power supply is a 850 watt EVGA GM fully modular power supply. And for cooling, we're using the Corsair Hydro X lineup of water cooling components. The pump is the XD5 RGB white pump reservoir combo. And the block is the XC7 RGB white CPU water block. The tubing is that matte color, it kind of looks like a frosted look type hardline tubing and the radiator is a Corsair XR5 360mm radiator with three Li and Li uni fans connected to it. Also you may see my lube kind of went high. The reason why I went so ridiculous and didn't really care if certain things were off you know a little bit saggy here and there is all these tubes are repurposed i went really high up here because i wanted just to get you guys a good view and a good look at this liquid once you actually see it in the system because it's actually very pretty this is probably the nicest black i've seen in a liquid for for cooling so i wanted to make sure you guys could really see it my bedroom does have an ac in it so i'm able to control the temperature i was able to keep the room at 25 c steady through all the testing which was pretty cool i keep an old school thermometer right here next to my computer so i can always see the temperature i do have temperature probes basically around the computer also but i like to know the room temperature exactly what it is i know it's not the most scientific of approaches but still kept the room at the same temperature. I used the same testing methodology across all three liquids. So the distilled water, PBO enabled, it held 4.4 gigahertz and it averaged 70 Celsius. Now again, these tests ran for one hour a piece. So for one hour at room temperature 25C, the Ryzen 5800X with distilled water hit 70C. And if you care about the score it got with the uh, distilled water, it was a 14,934. The Corsair Premix XL5 liquid, the color doesn't matter, but it's blue. It averaged 69 degrees Celsius at 4.3 gigahertz. And the score there was 14,879. So it was only a 1C difference between distilled water and the Corsair Premix. Not too much difference. I think the only difference with the Corsair liquid and the distilled water at this point is that the Corsair has the anti-growth inhibitors and the mixed metal stuff and probably some anti-foaming agent in it. But that's within the uh, margin of error. Like, I'm pretty sure if I ran the distilled water a few more times, it probably would have got the same score eventually. Margin of error there. We want to see at least three degrees difference. You can even argue three degrees Celsius is in the margin of error. But I'll say three degrees. I'll, I'll give it that. If it could do three degrees better, I'll give it a W. So it's time for the graphene test results. The room again was 25 degrees Celsius, PBO enabled, and it averaged 67 degrees Celsius at 4.4 gigahertz. The multi-core test score was 15,051. Was that three? I mean, it was three degrees better than distilled water and two degrees better than the Corsair Hydro X, but it did get a higher score. I mean, 175 points, right? In Cinebench R23. It scored better than distilled water by at least three C, only two C on the Corsair Hydro X. So for the results, it's a W for the graphene. Cool. It kept it. 3C cooler than the distilled water and 2C cooler than the uh, Corsair XL5. 
again, one or two C is really margin of error. That That's maybe not why you're gonna buy this stuff. Maybe the reason you buy this stuff is you're gonna see how it looks or you've seen how it looks already from another video and you just wanna have it in your system because it looks really cool. Well, okay, that's fine. But if you're looking for a several C drop, in your system's temperatures, that's not gonna happen. It's just not gonna happen. I've literally ran every test. I've seen other channels run tests on it too. I've seen some coming up to three or maybe even four degrees Celsius. Hey, every system's a little bit different, but I'm not gonna tell you you're gonna get seven degrees or better with graphene in your loop because I'd be lying to you. It's gonna have a lot of foam in it even though they have an anti-foam agent in there. So if you're looking for a nice black liquid to go in your system, this is it. Really and truly, I haven't seen another black I really like, but this stuff, it actually looks symbiont, like venom is going in there. And this is what it'll look like if you're using clear tubing, whether it's gonna be soft or hard tubing, it doesn't matter. This is what it's gonna look like in clear tubing. This is what it's gonna look like if you're using the matte tubing the one from corsair it looks like it makes things look like they're more cold i guess that was what they were going for but with this it just makes it look like a really nice matte black so for color i give it a 10 out of 10 for a rich deep black but that's color and that if that's what you want this stuff for is just for the color you don't care if it's going to drop your temperatures at all or anything like that then fine this is a good buy. I recommend this over pretty much any other black I've seen. Also, something else about this uh, liquid is that it is super, super foamy. I've never seen another coolant be so foamy. Literally, this was all foam from like here to here. And I wasn't sure if I had liquid in it or not. When it drops down towards the pump to make sure I need to put more liquid. I seen it go down and I got a little worried because when it got down to here, I looked down and I was like, wait, that's not liquid. And I killed the pump really fast. Luckily I used a second power supply, not the mains power supply to actually fill my loops. So please be aware of the foam. It is gonna foam up like that. So a few inches of foam when you first build your loop. I don't know how much graphene is actually in this substance. Maybe we could get a little bit of information off the bottle. Lower system temperatures and increases CPU and GPU performance. Next level formulation protects your system from bubbles. No, not even close. You guys seen it when I was putting this in the loop. You had to have seen it. <laughs>